Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel, also the name of my website and my Patreon. This is really going to be a, a fun video because I feel like I'm, I'm getting back as much as I'm giving back. And we're going to start to use, you've heard me use the analogy, where I'm putting tools in your toolbox. And today is a, a great example of that where we're going to get some of those tools out of our toolbox and do something creative. So in my entire journey with saddle hunting, the, the whole first 15 years, I enjoy the challenge of letting the tree give me everything I need to position and hunt. And I've got a lot of you, my friends, saddle hunters, said, John, it's just crazy uh, hunting without a platform. You, you don't use a platform. And, um, you know, not all trees will give you what you need and uh, in, in the form of a branch for our feet. And so this year, thanks to your motivation, I, I went out and bought myself a platform and I've used it uh, maybe a half dozen times. I don't use it very often uh, if the tree's giving me what I need. But I found myself struggling with the best way to attach it to the tree. And so I'm gonna show you how I'm doing that. And we're gonna use a couple tools from the toolbox. So, first up, uh, you'll notice that I fashioned, uh, because I don't use a pack, this would be optional, uh, I've, I've fashioned a neck strap out of six millimeter cord for this. This is just seven feet of cord, and I can wear it various ways. So you don't necessarily need this, but it's, it's super handy when you're actually in the tree. I've got another rule, which is I never uh, wanna be in a position where I drop something, or I can drop something I need. Well, I need my platform, and so I don't wanna be able to drop it. So I'll actually climb with it in this position, and then when I get to the tree, I'll, I'll, still, be, I'll still be wearing it. And so, uh, and I'm gonna demonstrate that. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you uh, how this attaches to the tree on a normal size tree. I'm gonna show you how to attach it to a giant tree, and then I'm gonna show you how I attach it to a tree while I'm in a JRB double rope climbing system. And then I'm gonna take you to lab and we'll build uh, a, a, a new attachment. So all that to come. All right, so first up, I'm gonna take this apart and show you as I unravel what I've got here. So this is approximately 10 feet of seven millimeter cord. Now that looks like a lot. But you know what didn't look like a lot? What didn't look like a lot was the tiny little strap that came with this when I bought it. And no disrespect to the manufacturer, this seems like a really well-built um, uh, platform, but the, the, the strap was too small to get in anything but a small to medium-sized tree. So I wanted something larger. And if I wanna get into a true giant, something that this is even too small for, I can still extend the contraption and do that. Okay, so let's get in tight now and take a look at how this is built. The first point is I'm going to remove from the button. This is a simple figure eight end loop. That's all this is, a figure eight end loop, which is tied small enough that I can just comfortably get that over the button and remove it. But it won't, it, it won't fall off. So that's, that's pretty basic. Down at the end, I've got a stop or not. I'm actually just using a single overhand. That probably should have been a double overhand, but I've been I've been using it this way all, all, all season. And then, what do I have here? I have two friction hitches, and I intentionally tied them with different cordages so you can see the different. I'll separate them a little bit. And so what, what's going on here? So this friction hitch is the head in friction knot, and it is tied to the longhorn hitch onto a ring with about, I don't know, four to five inches between the two. Also attached to that ring is a JRB Ascender 523 non-jamming. And what this, what this allows me to do is to create a three to one mechanical advantage ratchet strap to attach this platform to the tree. And I can move these two friction hitches around I can move them together, right? I can just move them wherever I need them to be and get it set. So let's, uh, let's watch me attach this here. I'll, I'm gonna stay on the ground uh, the first time here. Watch me attach it to the tree. So I'll use my, my body to, uh, to hold it in place, pass this around the tree. And what I will do is I will separate these friction hitches and I want to push that head and knot roughly 
roughly as, as far as I can comfortably reach with my left hand. I'm going to put that back there. And then I'm going to allow slack into the system to allow this bite formed, right? I've, I've separated these. These were touching each other and I've allowed several feet of cord to separate them now. And I put this around the button. And now I simply start to draw back. And you see what's happening? As I draw in, the cord moves inside of the JRB ascender. It self tends. And I can pull on this as I'm pulling right now. You know, there's some friction in the system, but I'm getting three to one mechanical advantage. So if I'm pulling, you know, 40 pounds of tension here, that means there's uh, 40 here and there's 40 here. And I can really get that cranked nice and tight. And then when I'm done, I just let it go and then set it. That's the deal. And of course, you can always tow hook it. I'll demonstrate that in the tree and get that set nice and tight. Let's get up on that. You can see it hasn't even come off the tree <clears throat> and I haven't tow hooked it. Rock solid. And now in nice and tight, let's take a look at this. I can move my friction hitches around. I get them close to each other and I can slide them wherever I want them to go by moving them together. So I've got my platform roughly where I want it on the tree and with my left hand, I'm gonna push out uh, roughly as far as I can reach with my left hand. And on a small tree like this, I'll be reaching almost all the way around to the back of the tree. But the most important thing is that distance. And then I'm creating, I'm separating the friction hitches. So I've got a piece to work with. All of this space has been created in between the friction hitches. And I use that to go around the button. And then I draw slack out. Now watch what happens here. I've got my head knot. It'll stay in place. It's attached to a longhorn hitch to a ring. On that is the JRB ascender, the compact non-jamming, which allows it to auto tend. And when I pull on this, now I'm going to do it really slowly, you see what's happening? Slack is coming out of the system. So I just pull on that. And I'm pulling myself close to the tree and I get all I, I can out of it. And then I can set my platform. And now for removal, I just put some slack in here, uh, enough to take it off of the button. And when I bring this back around, I can, I can simply shove that head in and it picks up the other knot and I can move them wherever I want. When I get it to the end, it gives me a nice little bit of weight if I want to flip this around a larger tree. Obviously one this small, I can just reach around. But for a big tree, that's a perfect amount of weight to allow me to flip it around and you'll see that. Okay, so now let's try this on a little bigger tree. And this is clearly one that the strap that came with my platform would not have been able to go around. So I've moved the friction hitches towards the end of my rope and that gives me just a little bit of mass and it's easier for me to flip it around the tree. And I'll demonstrate that. So you might be, right, we might be 20 feet up when we're doing this. So we'll get a, a, a little slack here. I got pricker bushes in the way, but right, most of the time we should be able to put, put that around. And I have, I've got enough geometry here. I've got enough. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push this out roughly to the end of my reach. And then I pull slack. And look, I don't, I don't have a lot of extra cord here. It goes quickly, right? I've only got a little bit of extra cord. I couldn't do a tree much bigger, but we can with an extension and I'll show you that next. But let's get this cranked nice and tight. Let's say, uh, let's say that's my, my position, okay? Got that where I want it. 
and set it in place. Now it'll test my flexibility to get up there, but let's give it a try. And look, that did not come away from the tree one bit. Now it might, we would simply tow hook it, but you get the idea. That three to one mechanical advantage really helps me get this put on the tree. All right, let's go try one even bigger. Okay, so what if we found ourselves on a huge tree, so big that our line, when we passed it around, isn't long enough. I can just touch the button, but I can't get my head knot out where I want it to be. So we're, we're not dead. What we can do, because I always carry some extra cordage with me. So here is, I don't know, this is probably seven feet of cord tied in a loop with a, closed with a hunter's bend. We can simply extend, we can extend this using this loop. And, he, and I can do it, again, I, I'm on the ground obviously, but uh, you can easily picture me in the tree. I just gotta be careful not to drop anything because it's not fun having to re-rig this around the tree. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully remove the figure eight from the button. And I'm gonna tie, uh, you, could, you can call it a girth hitch, but it, whenever you tie a girth hitch in two loops of rope, it's actually called a reef knot. And so what I've done is I've effectively extended the length. See what happened? Okay. Okay, so now I am going to take the platform just as I would wear it uh, around my body. I'm going to head over to this tree. This is, a, this is a real tree I picked out this season. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I attach this to the tree while I am hanging from my climbing rope. My climbing rope's already in the tree, and so I'm going to head over there and, and uh, climb the tree. Okay, so now when I get to height, I'm gonna leave this around my neck because I don't want any chances that I could drop the platform. And I will unravel it. And being right-handed, I like to flip this around from right to left. Yeah, I could do it either way. But the first thing I'll do is I'll get this position roughly where I want it on the tree. So I'm going to take it off my shoulder, it's only around my neck, and I'm just going to put the platform roughly where I want it on the tree. And this is really cool that my body, like what, you can see my guard of hitch foot loop here, I can place that on the platform and it kind of, I mean it's holding it in place. If I dropped it, it would still be around my neck. But the, that's the platform, that's exactly where I want it, it might sag a couple of inches, but my, the, the pressure caused by the guard hitch foot loop is holding it against the tree. And so, you know, I've got two hands free. Now this could be a much bigger tree, much bigger tree, but as such, you know, really easy to toss that around. I got both hands to work. Now I've got it in position. Looks pretty good, it might sag an inch, and I just pull on this. And the nice thing is because, you know, if I was pushing, I'd be pushing my body away, but because I'm pulling, I, I'm, I'm stable. And I'll get every little bit of slack out of that as I can. And now, I'll, I'll fold the platform up, take off the neck strap. Again, I'm making sure I have everything I can and now I'm ready to really set it. And I'll do that as I, as I climb onto it. So it's still safely attached to my climbing rope. Go up a little higher. And now I'm ready to set the platform. Now you'll notice I'm always taking slack out of my climbing rope. Doesn't matter how you climb, you always want to be on little to zero slack. So if you look, I didn't even have to do a tow hook. 
I didn't even have to toe hook it. But uh, in the event that you want to get it even tighter, a toe hook is where you raise up the platform and then put some weight on it and then set it a second time. And that's just, it's just rock solid. Okay, so now the hunt's over. It's time to come down. And we're gonna remove our platform during our rappel. Pop on our munter. And I'll start my rappel. And I'll stop, I'll stop here. That's a good height to, to work. And, and it's really quite simple to remove this. First, I'll remove uh, the tension by popping it up. I'll make sure I'm not going to drop it. And then I simply work back on the JRB ascender hitch to get a little slack in the system. That's it. And pop it out. and it's off. You know, and I'll clean up the slack once I get down at the bottom of my climb. And now break these and resume. Okay, and now we're gonna build one, but first let's take a closer look at my platform. The next drop I created, I used six millimeter cord, I used seven feet or 213 centimeters and attached it with a poacher's knot on either side. And that gives me a really nice long neck strap and enough room to work it off of my neck to get it onto the tree. And one other detail is that the button on your uh, platform or stick needs to be far enough away such that we can get two strands of that seven millimeter cord in there and, and uh, it, it'll still rotate. So on mine, it was a little tight, so I had to back this off and I put a couple of washers in there just to give me enough room in there for the seven millimeter cord to uh, move freely. All right, let's put that down. So the knots I'm gonna tie right now, this is not a knot tying lesson. This is simply a working session. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll leave you links to go find the videos uh, to get detailed instruction on how to tie these knots and I'll just tell you what I'm going to tie and what I'm going to tie it on. So I'm starting with 10 feet of 7 millimeter cord that's 305 centimeters and I've got two pieces of 6 millimeter cord. One is 4 feet or 123 centimeters and one is 5 feet or 152 centimeters. So if you add up all the 6 millimeter cord I have between the neck strap and these two pieces that's a total of 16 feet of 6 millimeter cord and 10 feet of 7 millimeter cord. And so now I'm going to run a timer and let's see how long it takes me to build this. I start by tying a figure eight on a bite. Got a dedicated video on how to tie the figure eight on a bite such that it comes out perfect every time. And that looks like about the right size loop to get over my button. I will tie a running highwayman's hitch here on a little bar that's just out of your field of view so I can keep working. Next, I will tie a head and knot. Very simple friction hitch and we have a dedicated video on how to tie the head and. Great. Next, I'm going to grab my rappel ring 
and tie a longhorn hitch. And I need a few inches of room here to allow both friction hitches to move up and down freely. So tying a longhorn hitch and just doing it really upside down relative to the way the original video showed it. But we know how to tie our knots upside down and backwards. Four feet of six millimeter cord is just perfect for that. Okay, now I will tie with five feet of cord. I'm getting my reference measurement about 37 inches and I'll be tying a JRB ascender. Make sure you can still see me. Two wraps up. I'm not, I'm not showing off. I'm just tying knots. This is how fast I tie them in in practice and and you know I'm, I'm no genius at tying knots I just do it a lot and so you can achieve this same speed or, or faster um, and I think it's important for me to make sure I do my share of practical knot tying as well as slow instruction and so you can refer to the slow instructions to get all of the details And this one will take a while because the tricky part is engaging the ring. I haven't done this in a while and I'll have to scratch my head and get it right. So let's bring that ring down into view. I'm going to put the ring on the back side. And I will take the cord, put it through the ring because it has to travel through the ring in order to do its job. And then uh, I've got a completed 523 JRB sender, but to transform it into compact non-jamming mode, I take what was the standing end, put it back through. Got my handy dandy nail here. Create some room. So, see what's happened? It's picked up the ring. And now, through the ring on this side. And I back this strand out. And replace it with this one. Now, one of the things about the non-jamming JRB centers, we want this descending strand. You just want to pull on that really nice and tight before we tie our overhand knot. Okay, so that seems good. Okay, and you'll recall I'll, I'll typically put a second uh, stop, uh, uh, stopper there, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. So what do we got there? That was five minutes and 15 seconds to, to tie this. And so, I mean, that's it. I mean, you, you can <clears throat> achieve that same kind of speed. Now, in the beginning, this will be a little bit hard to move, but it'll, it'll break in once we get a little load on it. And I'm, I'm ready to go. Let's go outside and test this. First thing, I'll, I'll run this one left-handed so you can watch what's going on here. I'll get that around the button. So that, that could be adjusted a little bit. It's just a little bit easy to get on. And so we could always tune a tiny bit out of there. All right, let's take this around the tree. And I just tied it. So these are gonna be a little, little tough to move. Let's get them moving a little bit. Let's 
try to move both of these together. Just get them broken in a little bit. Okay, decent. Let's push the heading out about as far as I can reach. And then separate the two hitches. Okay. And now I put this around the button. Okay, so this has never been tightened before. And I can just, looks like I probably, you know, I should have pushed this a little bit further, but I've got just enough room to finish that. Again, this is the first time this has ever been set. Pretty good. Let's go, let's just do the whole thing again. Put it around the tree. Just moving these around, getting them broken in. So now I've got that heading, you know, roughly as far as I can reach with this hand. Bring this around. Get it on the button. And watch how this tends, right? This is the magic of this uh, JRB ascender in, uh, in its compact form, but it'll just tend. I can really give a good pull on that. And it's, it's ready to take load. Okay, let's do so. And it's gonna be a little bit of a reach for me Look at that, first time. And I don't even need to tow hook it. And the last piece of business is simply how I coil up my rope and I don't do a lot. After I remove it from the tree, I probably rappel to the ground and I'm, I got my boots on the ground. I still got my neck strap around my neck and shoulder. I simply close the platform and then I'll take the friction hitches, right? Just took them off the tree, just tied them, and I'll push them out to the end. I like to always just prepare for the next tree being uh, you know, a larger tree. I'll push those out near the end, and then I don't, I don't do much. I mean, your platform might work a little different or be shaped a little different, but I just go around, consume the cord I have, and then I don't, I don't do much. I just place this down inside and when I clamp that shut, I mean, it really doesn't seem to rattle around much on me. And so I really haven't had any problem with, with noise and it's always easy to get undone. I will say, I guessed when I first built this and used uh, 10 feet of cord. And frankly, I think that's a good number. Uh, most, it's, I've only needed to extend it on a really giant tree. And what's the big deal if you've got a couple extra feet of this cord laying down? Again, you're not gonna uh, truly be making it all the way around a tree that's 10 feet in circumference because you need that couple feet that's gonna double back. But that'll get you in a pretty decent tree. And, uh, you know, again, I, I worked on twiddling with this all season before I actually publicized the video, but I'm confident that this is what I will be using uh, for seasons to come. And of course it works the same as it does on a stick, it works on a platform. Okay, and so one more time, how I wrap that up. What I tend to do is shove these friction hitches all the way to the end. And you know it's gonna it's gonna vary a little bit based on the actual the detailed geometry of how yours you know how many feet you use. But I just coil that around carefully. And there's all kinds of ways you could stash this, but uh, I've learned that this is just this is adequate. I just fold this over and put it inside. It doesn't seem to jingle, it doesn't, it just it's just perfect. And often what I'll do because I have a pretty long uh, length here and so I might just wear it kind of like a knapsack like that because then it just stays right on my stays right on my butt and I'm I'm good to go all right guys thank you very much